this. And joining us now to discuss all of it is the House's top progressive Congresswoman, Pramila Jayapal, from the great state of Washington. Uh, Congresswoman Jayapal, thank you for being here. I want to start with Ukraine, if I can. You heard the president. He told reporters he doesn't really care how Congress gets the funding done on both of these issues, Ukraine and COVID. He just wants it done right away. Should Senator Schumer link the two bills in the Senate, knowing the Republicans are likely to try to block both, to balk at it if the votes are connected? Well, uh, first of all, it's great to see you and great to be with you. I, I think the important thing here is we do need to do both of them. Whatever games Republicans are going to play, I do feel like they're less likely to play them if the two are linked. Because, as you know, we've been trying to get COVID aid for some time, and Republicans have been stopping us from making sure that Americans across this country can get their tests and their vaccines and everything that they need. That money has run out. And unfortunately, Republicans have been blocking us from providing the additional COVID aid, which is why I think it probably makes sense to link them um, so that it, it is clear to everybody that both Ukraine and COVID aid need to be done. But obviously, that's up to uh, Majority Leader Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. We'll see what it looks like. But that's been our advice to the speaker. Uh, keep them linked, because otherwise we're afraid that Republicans will once again stop right. Americans from getting the aid they need for their health care. So devil ad, devil's advocate here, <clears throat> Congresswoman, why not separate these bills, knowing that Ukraine obviously has bipartisan support on its own? Time is of the essence, as we witness again today. Ukraine has the potential to suffer the most if this drags out. Why not just get on that immediately? Well, again, because Republicans have blocked COVID aid before, and so both of them are urgent. We urgently need to provide this aid to Ukraine, and the money has run out for vaccines and testings for Americans here at home. So that's why we need to make sure we do both of them urgently, and whatever way we can get them both done quickly. This is a negotiation that usually happens between the majority leader, the speaker, and the minority leader. So Let's see what happens here. But we're ready. Fair. Democrats are ready to vote both th those through right away. It's the Republicans that have been the problem. So one of the issues that's been a sticking point that Republicans have been focused on right now is this fight over Title 42 and the COVID package. Uh, I know that you want to see Title 42 end, but if extending Title 42 or taking it out, Title 42 being the border restriction that requires those who come into the U.S. to be, expo uh, to be expelled immediately, if, if it is to stick around like this, to stick for a bit, obviously, one of the real challenges is this is the only way you get the funding passed for it is via Title 42. Can, can you swallow a vote on that or just wait? You know, is that would that be OK for your caucus? No, unfortunately, we can't um, because Title 42 is, uh, you know, really it was outrageous that it was put in place to start with. Um, and it has led to the disorderly process that we see with thousands of people being expelled into Mexico. Uh, the Republicans can't have it both ways. They're, they're saying that, that the, you know, we don't need more COVID aid because there isn't a health emergency. And at the same time, they want to keep Title 42 in place, which is a public health law that the CDC has said we should lift. So honestly, I got to tell you, I'm an immigrant and I am tired of the way that Republicans have scapegoated immigrants and continue to do that. Title 42 has nothing to do with keeping our border safe. What we really need to do is pass comprehensive immigration reform. And so the CPC, along with the CHC, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and the Congressional Progressive Caucus, have both said that we will not support legislation that includes uh, a reinstatement of Title 42. It's just scapegoating immigrants and we're not and it does nothing to protect us on health or on border security. So that is not going to be, uh, that's going to be a non-starter. Let me ask you about another topic where the president made headlines yesterday. He, he said of student loan forgiveness, uh, the following, take a listen, here it is. I am considering dealing with some debt reduction. I am not considering $50,000 debt reduction, but I'm in the process of taking a hard look at whether or not there are going to, there will be additional debt forgiveness and uh, I'll have an answer on that in the next couple of weeks. So Congresswoman, is getting rid of some student debt enough or does it not go far enough? Does the president need to go farther? 
Well, look, we're thrilled that the president uh, is committed to canceling some student debt. And we talked to him a couple of weeks ago when the Progressive Caucus met with him in the White House. We told him this was one of our top priorities. 45 million people across the country have student debt, and it's crushing them. And so uh, we know that the number will be somewhere between the 10,000 that he promised on the campaign trail and the 50,000 that we have been pushing for. Maybe is 10,000 enough? Well, look, that's what he promised on the campaign trail. We've been pushing for 50,000. Somewhere between that is going to be the right number, and we're going to celebrate that number because it means that millions of people will get relief for their student debt. I'm still pushing for 49,999. Hmm. He said it's not going to be 50, but he didn't say it's not going to be 49,999. So let's see All how right. far we can. It almost sounds like Herman Cain right there with the 999. Uh numbers. It, it, let me ask you about what we heard from the from Chuck in just the last segment. We played an excerpt of his new episode of Meet the Press Reports, Democrats' Struggles in Rural America. The chair of Nebraska's Democratic Party recently said this. This is from late last year. They said the party essentially has no leaders on the national stage in elected office or on party committees who live in a rural community. This leaves a practical void in understanding rural voters. There's no voice in the room when strategy, message, and funding decisions are being made to make the case as to why rural voters should should be a key focus of the races across the country. How do you address what even some rural Democrats view as a real blind spot in your party when it comes to voters who live outside cities and suburbs? Well, I really agree with her. I mean, I think that uh, it is really important for us to have a rural strategy not just going out and talking to people randomly, but actually we are doing a lot for rural voters, but you would never know it. I mean, if you look at the infrastructure bill that we passed, there is an enormous amount in that infrastructure bill that directly impacts rural voters, rural broadband. We've got you know all kinds of uh, money in there for transportation projects in rural communities. And we need to actually elevate that, make it a strategy and a platform of the Democratic Party. And we do need to have people who really understand those rural voters as we're designing our messaging and our strategy. I'll tell you, a lot of the Progressive Caucus's agenda, the president's agenda around child care, um, around housing are issues that are incredibly popular in rural areas, but we don't talk about them as if they are, and we haven't right. done enough on some right. of those issues. So I agree with her, and I think that we would be well served to have a specific rural America strategy that we roll out and really pound across the country so that rural voters know that Democrats are delivering for them. Congresswoman Jayapal, I lived in Seattle and in Spokane for most of a decade. Always nice to have someone from Western Washington on the show. It's nice to see you. Thank you very much.